the global economy by 2050. According to PwC, based on their long-term global growth projections to 2050 for 32 of the largest economies in the world and expected to account for 85% of global GDP. The world economy is expected to have doubled in size by 2050, due to continued technology-driven productivity improvements. Assuming broadly growth-friendly policies and no major global civilization-threatening catastrophes. Emerging markets, E7, could grow around twice as fast as advanced economies, G7. Six of the seven largest economies in the world are projected to be emerging economies in 2050 led by China, first, India, second, and Indonesia, fourth. The US could fall down to third place in the global GDP rankings while the EU 27's share of world GDP could fall below 10% by 2050. UK is expected to be down to 10th place by 2050 with France out of the top 10 as they are overtaken by faster growing emerging economies. Biggest increases expected by Vietnam, from 32nd to 20th place. Philippines, from 28th to 19th place and Nigeria, from 22nd to 14th place. The share of the global GDP will increase for China, from 18% to 20%, and India, from 7% to 15%, whilst reducing for the USA from 16% to 12% and EU from 15% to 9%. By 2050, emerging economies such as Indonesia, Brazil and Mexico are likely to be larger than the UK and France while Pakistan and Egypt could overtake Italy and Canada, on a PP basis. In terms of growth, Vietnam, India and Bangladesh could be the fastest growing economies over the period to 2050, averaging growth of around 5% a year. Nigeria has the potential to be the fastest growing large African economy and could move up the GDP rankings from 22nd place to 14th by 2050. Colombia and Poland also display great potential, and are projected to be the fastest growing large economies in their particular regions. Growth in many emerging economies will be supported by fast growing populations, boosting domestic demand and the size of the workforce. In 2016, US GDP per capita was around four times the size of China's and almost nine times that of India's. By 2050, these gaps are projected to narrow to around double China's and around three times India's, showing long-term income convergence. In 1972, due to the Cold War, American President Richard Nixon entered an unlikely alliance with Mao Zedong to pull them away from the Soviet Union which brought China into the conventional world economy. However, with the collapse of the Soviet Union it blinded the West to the consequences of China's rise. As of today, China has emerged as a major global power. Its single-party rule and state-dominated economy has raised alarm in foreign capitals. By 2035, according to most economic forecasts, China will have overtaken the US to become the world's biggest economy. By analyzing current trends with the contributions of labor, capital and productivity there are major geographic and political shifts in store for the world economy by 2050. The recent period of stability, stretching from the end of World War II through to the early 21st century, is coming to an end. The center of economic gravity is shifting from west to east, from advanced economies to emerging markets, from free markets to state controls and from established democracies to authoritarian and populist rulers. The transition is already upending global politics, economics and markets. However, wars, Pandemics, natural disasters and financial meltdowns can severely alter the current trends. Asia is returning to the center of the global economy. At the turn of the century, Asia accounted for just 25% of global output, substantially less than North America and Europe. By 2050, the continent that already hosts more than half the world's population will also contribute more than half its economic output. Largely driven by the rise of China and India, the emerging market share of global GDP is also soaring. In 2000, emerging markets accounted for about a fifth of global output. By 2050, they will contribute almost 60% of the total. By 2033, India will overtake Japan to become the world's third biggest economy.
In 2035, China will outstrip the US to become the biggest. By 2050, Indonesia may have moved into the big league. Three of the world's biggest economies will be Asian emerging markets. By the 2040s, the combination of an aging workforce and development fatigue is set to drag China's annual GDP growth down to around 3%. India, with a younger population and significant room to catch up, will likely be clocking a faster pace. There's already plenty of tension between the world's most populous single party and democratic states, which have already engaged in a bloody border skirmish, and it's likely to escalate with India's rise to challenge China as the Asian hegemon. The share of global output coming from economies that are free, or mostly free, is set to slide from 57% in 2000 to 33% in 2050, the share from those classed as mostly unfree economies with a high degree of state ownership and control is set to rise from 12% to 43%. In 2000, free societies with democracies accounted for 86% of global output. By 2050, that share is set to shrink to about 60%. The end of the Cold War era was the closing of one chapter and the start of another. The world is in transition as the balance of economic and political power shifts from west to east, from free markets to the state and from democracies to authoritarianism and populism. Top 10 economies in 2050, according to PwC's The World in 2050 report. 1. China. 2. India. 3. USA. 4. Indonesia. 5. Brazil. 6. Russia. 7. Mexico. 8. Japan. 9. Germany. 10. UK. All of the mainstream forecasts are based on the status quo being extrapolated from now until 2050 and the same trends continuing. However there are many factors that can drastically impact the projected outcomes.